Okay, so we're back and ready to move on. Let's come back to our library. And I typed in the word shape, and that filtered the entire library for the word shape. And what I want is this shape node. And we can take a quick look at that. Again, just like everything else, it has base parameters. Just like everything else, it has attributes. And then it has its own instance parameters. What it also lets us do is pick different shapes. Make a little bit more room there. So I can pick any number of different things that are available on this drop down list. What I'm going to go ahead and get is the brick. Now it looks like a square because it is. It and it it's actually different from square because of how it acts as you scale it and do things to it. Uh, the square has true is just like truly flat sides. Now I'm just going to bring the scale down just a wee bit because that's going to give me a line along the edge. And you know if we're dealing with things that tile sometimes it helps to be able to see how it tiles and to do that I'm going to click on this 2D uh, image I'm going to hit the space bar and that is going to show me how it looks tiled so I now have a much better idea of what I'm dealing with so I'm just going to bring the scale down a little bit so we have you know a little bit of space between these guys now I want to make some bricks so the size of this thing that I'm building, I'd like to, I'll have the Y as, as half the X. I want to see this again without tiling. So I'm going to hit the space bar again. Okay, well, you know, the, the shape is what I want, but it's still, you know, it's kind of big and it's not looking anything like bricks yet. And that's because I want to up the tiling here. So as I click this up, it's going to tile the image for me. And again, I can click on that space, hit the space bar. So I think I'm going to go with three because I want my material to have that many rows. So we're, we're going to fix it so that there's bricks in here too in a little bit. But that's going to be the basic sort of height that I want them. So we have alternating rows of bricks now. They're still looking kind of square. I mean, the edges aren't looking much like bricks. And that's where this pattern specific thing comes in. It's going to bevel them up a little bit. And again, I'm clicking, hitting the space bar. I want to just get it so it's all even with the way they're tiling there. So I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a spacing I like. So this is going to be the, the, the black space in between each brick. We'll bevel them up later. I mean, not in this lesson, but we will bevel them up a different way but this is I'm looking at the outside edge of my brick now if we wanted to we're not going to in this particular case we can do other things so if I wanted to make a zigzag pattern for example I could do this and because I have the space bar hit here I can look at how it tiles we can make all kinds of cool patterns and you know, we can experiment with different shapes as well. So, you know, you can fool around with it. You can play around with the scale. You can do the tiling. Uh, there's a lot to work with in this shape node. Okay, so we're back to zero. And we have now completed row, you know, the one row of bricks, which we've tiled out three times. But now we have to figure out a way of actually getting a brick pattern. And to do that, I'm going to introduce a couple of new nodes. We're going to get a transform 2D node, and we're going to get a blend node. And these are nodes that I use a lot. Uh, transform 2D is one of the most versatile nodes in Substance as far as moving uh, bitmaps or other images around. Again, we have base parameters just like everything else. Right, for right now, we're going to just deal with the parameters that it gives us here. So we are kind of limited in our motions. Any parameters that are in this GUI, if you will, that is set up for 
the Transform 2D will not mess around with your tiling. And you'll notice it only does 90 degree turns. Now, you can, you can set in an angle here, like 45 degrees or 20 degrees or whatever, and it'll do it. That's not a problem. You can also do any of this stuff freehand. You can resize it, you can, you can move it around, you can do all this stuff freehand. But if you veer away from 90 degrees, it's going to mess with tiling. And sometimes that doesn't matter. Uh, there are several cases where that doesn't matter because of certain conditions. Just know that if your tiling is messed up, one of the first places I'd look is my Transform 2D nodes to make sure that there's nothing kind of off. What this interface is actually talking about is a float for matrix. This is the actual matrix. It's very simple. It's only four numbers. And therefore, you can actually, with just those four numbers, get functions to do pretty much anything you want to do with whatever you feed in here is off. I don't know how it's off. I'm just going to grab a new one. That's what makes it so powerful that I can completely drive what's going, what I, whatever I feed into this input, I'm, I've got almost like limitless possibilities as far as moving it around using functions once I get a grip on how to manipulate this x1, y1, x2, y2. That's more advanced. So for now, we are just going to use these, you know, the, uh, the stuff that they have out here. But that's the, the guts of it, and that's what makes it a very powerful node. Again, we can offset. We can also offset freehand. Uh, MIP maps, again, that's talking about the um, level of detail, the LOD. And I guess you could put a color in there. I've never done that. You know, all of this, you know, basically I just deal with the offset and the matrix. Let's see what happens if we plug this guy in here. There it is. And if I offset the X, it's going to take my image and it's just going to move it around. Same on the Y. And even with just doing that, we can already get a whole lot done. I'm going to plug this into the next node we're going to talk about, which is the blend node. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have an opacity. Uh, the blend node can be either color or black and white. In fact, any node will tell you what kind of input it wants. If you see this orange, that's color. If you see the gray, that's black and white. Some of them will take either one. Some of them will only take a grayscale, and vice versa. Some of them will only take a color. I've mentioned before the background is designated by this dot and that's where it's going to get its input information from. So whatever node you have linked into here, unless you change the, um, the type of input it gets, it's going to get it through here. Now once I plug in this grayscale, if I try to plug in a color, it's going to start saying there's a problem because even though this says either or when it's empty, once you put something in, you're kind of committed to it. Now you'll notice the opacity, this is where we're going to plug in a mask, is always grayscale and it, it's not going to, you know, if you plug a color into the opacity, it's going to give you a problem because it's not going to like it. We are, before, the, before this series is through, we are going to look at masks. We're not going to look at them right now. I'm going to plug this in, and then I'm going to plug this in here. Now, the blend node, we looked at opacity. We can also change the blend mode. We can have copy, multiply, overlay, divide, you know, all this. Well, not it's not as full a selection as you might find in other places. But this node actually handles a lot of blends. And we're going to go with the light and blend. And what that means is that whatever the lightest color is will be the one that shows up. Now, I've double-clicked on my blend node. So whatever I've double-clicked on is what's going to show up in my 2D viewer. 
if I single click on another node, I will look at that node's information and be able to ma manipulate that node while still looking at the one I double clicked on. So I single clicked on that transform and I'm getting that transform of uh, you know, the ants, whatever you want to call them. So let's see what happens if we start offsetting on the Y. Yeah, I, uh, we're going to, I want these lines to match. I think I want everything to be bigger. So we're going to come back into our shape. I'm single clicking on my shape. I'm still looking at what's going on in my blend. And I'm going to bring the Y size down ever so slightly. Just so my, well, you know, it's, we're, all, we're also getting a problem here. Let's bring this back up to, yeah. I'm going to bring the scale back up to one. I'm going to single click on my transform again. There's something, oh, yeah, let's, that's where, I think we're going to make them smaller and then we're going to space them out a little bit better. Oh, that's where my problem is. There we go. Okay. So you can see that they, they're starting to have um, like those beveled edges a little bit. So it's more it's more specific to a brick rather than a square where it's going to do that. Right. We'll make it look even more bricky as we go along, but for now this is good. So we've we've got the the vertical spacing spaced out, and now we're going to come. Let's double click on that, make sure we're there, and then we're going to single click on the transform 2D, and we can now offset it on the X. So I think 0.5. I can also type it in. So I, you know, I've just offset it by by half. So it's going to they're doing a brick thing now. And again, if we click with our mouse and hit the space bar, we can see how it looks tiled. And that looks pretty good. So we've kind of made our own brick generator here. It's not as fancy. It doesn't have nearly as much functionality, but it works. So we can go ahead and replace this and replace this and see what we've made up here. Pretty good for a first effort. I'm going to clean up my space here. I could just, you know, drag these and hit the delete key, but what I can also do is come up here and hit clean. And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of anything on this graph that isn't attached to an output. So if you've got, you know, it, it's helpful if you've got a lot going on and it's just this massive graph and you're looking at it from like back here and you can't tell what's what. If you hit clean, it'll, it'll get rid of all that stuff. Okay, so that's that done and we're going to finish the video here. And next, we're going to start making these bricks look a little bit more interesting than they do now.